Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I have another tutorial for you today. I'm moving on from the chickens and I'm going to be doing a couple of ducks in the next few days. So today we're gonna start out not super simple, but with just one single duck here taking a little rest in the grass and I want to have just a little hint or impression of water behind him. So overall, I wanna keep the background relatively simple, but I want it to feel very natural. So right now I'm just doing my drawing of the duck and of course there will be a drawing template available to you if you see the links in the description below and if you're watching this video within the first 24 hours of it being published you can get that drawing template for free on my gumroad page so check that out if you are interested and I will tell you just a little bit about what we're going to do today so you can see down in the lower right hand corner the photo references that I'm using. So I really liked the way that the duck was resting in that picture on the bottom, but I really wanted this to be kind of a full body painting. And so that's why I have that other photo reference, just so I know how the rest of the feathers on the body should look. I want to keep the color palette here relatively simple. However, because I do want to have some iridescence on the head of the duck, I need to add this lemon yellow to my palette. And I will also use my yellow ochre. I'll even use some of my Pyrrhal Red and some of my Burnt Sienna. And then I will also be using Payne's Gray and Thalo Blue. So the only color here on my palette that I'm really not using is my Sepia, and that's just to the left of my Payne's Gray. So pretty much a full palette for this painting. I try to keep my colors pretty simple for these tutorials. I think that makes it a little easier to follow along, but I will make sure to explain every time I'm adding a new color. And do keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of neutrals, and so I will describe those as either warm neutrals when there's more yellow or red in the mix, and a cool neutral when there's more Payne's Gray or Thalo Blue in the mix. I'm starting out here with my Payne's Gray and my large brush, and I'm going to very simply brush in the backdrop for this duck, which as I said, is going to just be like a little pond or lake. The duck will be sitting in the grass. And you can see that as I drag my brush along, I'm allowing some of the white of the paper to poke through. I'm keeping this very light so that it's not distracting. And I think that that also gives it a nice sense of distance. But I really like to leave a little bit of white poking through because that makes me think of sparkling water. So I'm really going to leave that very, very simple for this painting. And then I'm also going to start to block in my grass. I will want to touch up some of the grasses as we go along, but I'm going to start out with just a block in. And right now I'm kind of pausing and contemplating exactly how I want to achieve this because I want to have a little bit of a shadow underneath the duck. The light source is going to be coming from the left so that the back of the duck's head is a little bit more illuminated. That's where we're going to see a lot of iridescence. And so I'm imagining that probably this duck is casting a shadow just to the right and below where it's sitting. So I'm starting with more Payne's Gray and I added a little bit of Thalo Blue, but I'm keeping this really watery right now. And I'm going ahead and starting to brush in just a subtle indication of where some of the grasses are. And if you're using my template, you'll notice that I drew in some of the grasses. A note about my template, sometimes I actually put more detail into those drawing templates for you than I actually have in my own drawing. With my drawing, I pretty much left the bottom part of the duck blank because you really don't need a line there. We're going to keep the grass very organic and it's just going to be basically the direction of your brush that determines how that grass is laying. So don't worry too much about that. Sometimes I put in a lot of details into those templates just so you have a little bit more of a visual guide as you go along, but it's not necessarily meant for you to actually transfer every single line onto your drawing, just whatever you're comfortable with. 
All right, so now I have a nice shadow here, and I also want to make sure that there's a good sense of light over on the other side of the duck, and so that's where I'm going to go in with more bright greens. So I'm going to use my lemon yellow, and first I'm just going to block in the entire head of the duck. So this will give a really nice undertone for the head of the duck for us to build that iridescence on. Also the beak, and we'll do a little bit of work with the beak too, it won't just be like a flat yellow. And then let's use this lemon yellow to begin to block in the grass over here on the other side. And I think that as I was doing this painting, I forgot to add this bright yellow over to the right of the duck, kind of behind the duck where he's not casting a shadow. But you could go ahead and do that at this phase as well. I just, sometimes you get tunnel vision when you're painting and you forget really obvious things. So now I'm mixing in some of those blues with the yellow to start to create a little bit more green. But I'm keeping this very light at this point. And I'm not going to go in and like paint every little blade of grass. I wanna keep, especially the area where there's a lot of light, very, very simple. And now I'm just adding a little bit of this into the shadow area as well so there isn't such a stark difference between those two areas. A little bit more phthalo blue here to brighten things up. I find that if you really want a nice, bright, vivid green, which quite honestly, it's pretty rare that you need that, but phthalo blue and a lemon yellow really makes a very nice bright green and we'll be using that combination quite a bit in this painting. Now I'm going in with a little bit of pure red. I don't need it to be really pure and I do want to keep it pretty light. It's a wash and I'm just going to block in the breast area of the mallard because this area first of all is getting a lot more light and it's going to also be much warmer in tone. In the photo reference, which both of the photo references that I'm using to do this are also going to be linked below in the description. Those are from the website pixabay.com, which I love to use. They have a lot of photographs that are free to use and also copyright free, so you don't have to worry about stepping on anyone's rights when you're using those because photographers put them up there with the understanding that people can use those photographs for pretty much any purpose that I'm aware of and there's no royalty or anything like that. So it's a great resource for artists. I've added a little bit of Payne's Gray in with that Pure Red. Again, keeping it really light. And I know that the red on the duck looks extremely bright and out of place at this point, but we're going to be building on it and it will lighten just a bit as it dries. But I wanna keep this really light and I'm starting to look for some of the neutrals on the duck's feathers that are a little bit of a neutral temperature. So this doesn't lean too far warm, although I would say it's a little more warm than it is cool, um, but this is kind of a neutral muted color with that Payne's gray and the pure red and I'm keeping that very light and watery and just beginning to block in some of the direction of the way that these feathers are sitting. Now I'm using a little bit more of the burnt sienna keeping it very light as well and so this is actually going to be even warmer than that other neutral that I laid down. And there's not too many areas on this duck that are completely white, and I really won't leave any white in as I paint, even though there are some markings that you could definitely interpret as white. But since I'm imagining that much of the body of the duck is falling into shadow, I'm not going to worry about preserving a lot of whites in the duck itself. And now that the yellow that I applied to the head should be mostly dry, I can begin to slowly build up the layers that will create that green iridescence. So I'm using more of that lemon yellow and a little bit of phthalo blue. Remember, if you're using a phthalo blue, like a true phthalo blue, it's a very strong and powerful pigment. So use it very sparingly because it can easily overtake any other mix that you create. Now I left just a rim of yellow showing on the back end of this duck's head because I think that that will create a little bit better sense of light, although it is creating an edge that's a little bit too hard, but that's okay. I went ahead and just blocked in a glaze of that light yellow green 
over the entire head other than that little bit of a rim, adding more yellow to this mix. And I'm starting to build up some of the grasses in the background with this. So it's not quite as watery as it was before, so I can get a little bit more of a texture build up. But again, I want to leave the grass pretty simple, pretty general. And then while this area is still a little bit wet, so I can get some soft mixes here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more phthalo blue into this same mix and begin to block that in, letting some of that light kind of lime green show through just a little bit. And basically what I'm thinking here is that as the duck's head turns away from the sun, away from the light source, we're going to get more of the dark iridescence where the feathers slowly begin to shift toward blue. And it's a very warm blue. And I am one who considers thalo blue a warm blue. I know that some people kind of think of blues the opposite way. And I think that they're, well, that's a whole other video, guys. We're not even gonna talk about blues. That's something that's been on my mind lately, how I can kind of approach that subject. But anyway, let's get back onto track. So while this is all very wet still, I'm slowly beginning to build up more of this phthalo blue in the head of the duck. And then I'm going back over to this mix that had some of my Pure Old Red and Payne's Gray, and I'm adding a little bit of the Burnt Sienna in with it, just to kind of neutralize it a little bit. And now I'm going to begin to build up some of the layers on the breast area. So it's not going to be so red. And you can definitely see, even before I applied this glaze, that the red had faded somewhat. I want just a little bit of that red to poke through just where the sun is hitting the breast of the mallard and that area can remain very nice and bright. Other than that, this painting has a lot of green and a lot of neutrals in it, and so it's really nice to have just a little bit of that hint of red poking through because it adds a lot of contrast. And then I'm going to use this again just to help further define some of these feathers on the body of the duck making sure that I don't completely cover up some of these lighter washes. I'm just beginning to build a little bit of form in this area. Essentially, this is approximately the same mix though that I used in that lighter wash on those feathers on the body. Keeping them very neutral, maybe just very slightly warm. And I'm going to start applying strokes that help to delineate some of these larger feathers. Again, I'm not worried about being scientifically accurate with this. I'm just glancing over at my photo reference just so I can get a sense of the direction and size of the feathers rather than articulating every single feather that can be discerned from the photo reference. To me, a photo reference is always just a jumping off point and helps to guide you as you paint and you learn to interpret light into paint, but it's not something that you should ever feel like you have to copy verbatim. And I think that that's a little bit of an uninteresting and not very fun way to work anyway. So just use that as just a little bit of inspiration to get you going. And then there's just a little tip of the wing that has a lot of blue in it. And so I'm going to use this mix of, it has phthalo blue, it also has some of the yellows in it. It also has some Payne's gray in it. I'm not too picky about exactly what that color is as long as it reads as blue. And then I'm going to add some of the blues down where the head meets the beak because this is going to be the area that is most occluded from the direct sunlight. And you can see that I do have some hard edges in here and I'll have to address those a little bit later. Basically just by re-wetting that area and lightly reactivating some of those pigments, we can help to create a little bit of a softer appearance in that area. So nothing to worry about there. And then even though I don't really see in the photo reference any blue 
otherwise in the feathers of the bird. I am just adding a little accent of blue in there because I think it just helps to create a sense of cohesion that I really like. And then also I noticed in the photo reference that because the photo of the bird where his head is in this position and the light is coming from the left, there's a little bit of a cast shadow formed on the body of the bird from the head and beak. So I want to just lightly brush that in. So this is just some phthalo blue and some Payne's gray, keeping it pretty watery and applying it as a glaze right in this area. And that just helps to create a really nice sense of form. And you can really start to see at this point how those neutrals in the feathers that I use, that really light initial wash, is really starting to help build up a nice sense of the color contrast in the mallard. Here's a little bit more of that burnt sienna. And I mixed it right into that other mix that had some blues and Payne's grays. So this is just a really nice warm neutral and starting to build up some of the form in the breast area. Again, I want to leave some of that red showing through, some of those other warm neutrals showing through, but I'm starting to build up a little bit better sense of form. Being kind of careful not to cover up some of those blades of grass, I'll go back into that area. Right now it's looking a little bit funky and not very attractive, but I'll go back in with a lot of pigment to kind of help those blades of grass feel a little bit more natural than what they do now. But I'm, to the best of my ability, trying to just avoid painting over those little blades of grass. And there's a lot of red in this mix, but I'm using it pretty sparingly. This is a fairly concentrated mix compared to what I've used previously, so I'm trying to be very sparing in where I apply it so I don't get more pigment than I want in large areas. A little more Payne's Gray. Pretty much used up all my Payne's Gray for this painting. Of course, I will probably just replenish that and keep going with it. It lately has been a big time favorite of mine. You can just do so much with it. And as I apply these darker strokes, I don't think of these as like an outline to these feathers. I'm really looking for areas of shadow. So when I am doing watercolor painting or really any kind of painting, I'm trying to think about painting the impression of light and shadow patterns rather than you know necessarily painting feathers or painting a duck even. So I'm trying to look for areas of shadow. So I don't think of these as lines or outlines. I try to keep my strokes pretty loose and I just go with the observation rather than I think when you start thinking about, you know, painting feathers, it somehow, at least for me, it creates a little bit of a psychological block. And that's when I start thinking a little bit too literally. But if I just think of things as being an area of light and shadow, it helps me to kind of abstract away from the subject and focus more on the actual physical act of painting. So here's a nice blue neutral, lots of Payne's gray and phthalo blue, along with some of those yellows from before. And I'm just adding a little bit to this cast shadow. I'm not going to completely go over that area again, just the part that's immediately behind the head. I felt like that could be just a little bit darker. Adding some more phthalo blue in here. And now this isn't dry brushing necessarily because I didn't blot my brush off, but there isn't much water on my brush as I do this because I'm starting to build up just a little subtle sense of texture. Adding a few strokes to the tip of the wing. Again, not to outline individual feathers, but just to kind of notice some of the areas where there's a little bit of shadow and separation. And now we're actually getting pretty close to the end. 
And so I'm going to give my mind a little break from the duck and I'm going to work on the grass just a little bit more. And this is where I remembered some of this brighter grass behind the bird over on the right side. So I'm just blocking that in really lightly just to make sure that that doesn't get completely forgotten. It was the only area on this paper that was white and somehow I managed not to notice it until just then. So I'm getting a lot more of that lemon yellow. I guess really in this painting I didn't use a lot of yellow ochre, although I will use a little bit of it coming up here just to lightly glaze over some of the neutrals on the duck to add a bit of warmth. So I'm going in with this yellow, kind of just, I guess I would call this scumbling, even though that's really an oil painting term, but I'm keeping the pigment relatively dry so it's not really a glaze and just kind of running that over some of the grasses in the shadow area just to brighten them up help them to feel a little bit more united with those brighter lighter grasses and now i'm going in with some of this yellow ochre as i just discussed keeping that very light and watery and using this as a glaze on top of some of those other neutrals even though i kept those a little bit warmer because they had just a little bit more red than Payne's gray in them. I think that it really helps just to glaze over that with this nice yellow ochre. It just helps to give a better sense of liveliness, although I'm not completely covering up those previous neutrals, just adding a few little hints of a warmer tone in a few select areas. This is just a little bit more of the yellow ochre and I'm going to use this to add a sense of sunlight to the breast of the bird in just a few areas. Again, I do like the idea of having just a bit of red showing through to give a little contrast to all the greens. And now just a little yellow ochre on the beak of the duck to help warm that up. Going in with more of the lemon yellow. So trying to see really if I can just soften up this edge where that yellow is showing through just on the rim of the head of the duck. So kind of just applying a glaze there and helping that area to soften up just a little bit. And now glazing a little bit more, especially on the tops of the feathers that are receiving a little bit more sunlight. And I think that this adds a really nice nuance to those areas too. Those colors are hard to describe, so I stick to trying to describe them in terms of the fact that they're neutrals and their temperature, so whether they're warm or cool. A little bit of a warm neutral here on the wing. I realized that between the blue tip of the wing and then the rest of the wing, there is a little bit of white. And as I said before, because much of this bird is not in direct sunlight, I didn't want to leave any pure white on the body of the bird. But to show that that area is lighter, I'm just applying some more saturated neutral color here and leaving that area just in between these darker neutrals and the blue tip of the wing, leaving that area untouched so that it feels like that should be white, except that it's in shadow. So of course it won't be pure white. Adding a little bit more delineation on some of these other feathers. especially these feathers that are a little closer to the tail. There's a lot of striation there, so I wanted to capture that. And then this base area of the bird where he's sitting, it all feels really too light because I've kind of been shying away from that area because again, I want to leave the texture of the grass that is overlaying the bird. I didn't want to get in the way of that, but now I'm going to go into that area and add a little bit more value down here while trying my best to keep the integrity of some of that texture of the grass on top of the bird. So I wetted that area with just a light wash, and now I'm going in with more pigment and just dropping it into that wet area so that it can create a really soft sense of value and form. Adding some more Payne's Gray 
into that phthalo blue and then bringing that up into another mix. This is just kind of how I approach neutrals. I start just throwing everything in together. So there's no real formula to this. It's just, you know, any neutral of approximately the correct temperature is going to do. So this is more of a cool neutral because there's more blue in the mix. And I'm working a little bit on the beak, adding this nostril. I think it's called a nostril on a, on a duck. And then right at the tip of the beak, there's just a little marking, like a little triangle shaped marking that I wanted to get in there. And you'll notice that on the head of the duck, I haven't added the eye at all, but you can really almost see where it's going to go at this point. It won't be super noticeable because that area is already very dark in value. So it'll just basically be a dot. Adding some more yellow to the beak. This is really more yellow ochre just to add a little bit of warmth and texture into the beak without going overboard. Phthalo blue and my red. I'm pretty much out of my Payne's gray and at this point I don't really want to refill it so I'm just going to make do with my phthalo blue mixing in some of that pure red and this creates a really nice dark color. Technically it's like a very cool violet but if I leave it very saturated then you'll see that I get a really nice dark mark. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I don't really use black paint for anything. The only time I ever really use black paint is when I'm oil painting and just doing a simple value study. And I wouldn't even have any tubes of black paint if they didn't come in some of the sets that I've bought over the years. So I actually have several tubes of black paint that have never been opened just because I've gone through so many sets of paint without actually using the black. So I've started doing more value studies just so I can put those to use. But I don't have any black watercolors because black watercolor doesn't typically come in a set of watercolor, interestingly enough. And I'm using this nice dark cool neutral again just to add some of the darker markings to the wing of the bird. This also just helps to create a sense of there's a little white mark just to the left of that blue tip of the wing. If I add a little bit more of a dark value there. And I think this is a little bit too watery here for what I'm wanting to use it for. I wanted to use it for the eye, but since I have it and it had a lot of water in it, I'm using this just to add back some of these blades of grass that were a little bit lost along the way. Just adding a few strokes here and there, not for the purposes of painting every single blade of grass, but just to create that texture, just like with the feathers. And we'll just speed that up a little bit here because it's basically very simple mark making. Not a ton of water in the mix as I build up the texture, but again, not being super precise. I actually don't have any photo reference for the grass where the bird is sitting because I'm using a photo reference where the bird is in water. And then the other photo reference where the bird is actually sitting on grass, it's just a close up of his head. So I'm just kind of making that up as I go. And again, I did mark in some of the grass texture on the template, but I don't necessarily think that you need to actually transfer those lines onto your own painting if you don't want to. So I added some more yellow to the head to try to soften up some of those lines. I really like the lost edge between the left edge of the bird's head and then those green grasses. They're basically the same color there and I'm not going to really do anything to distinguish those shapes from each other because I, I love finding opportunities to use lost edges. And now I'm going to soften up some of the iridescence on the head because I felt like the line work there was just a little too strong. So that is basically it for this tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I look forward to coming back again tomorrow with another duck tutorial. So stay tuned for that and have a great day. Bye.